Welcome back. Up next, let's tackle conditional rendering. Conditional rendering basically means that you have something in your data that determines whether an item should be displayed or not. So it's a very simple concept. Let me show you how it works. Let's simply create an H1 and inside of here, I will just have some text. The way that we handle conditional rendering in Vue is using V if. So if we said V if, and then in here you have a couple of different options. At first, let's go ahead and say if one is less than zero, then go ahead and render that. All right, let's go back to Chrome, hit refresh, and of course it disappears because one is not less than zero. Obviously, if we said one is greater than zero, there we go. Now that renders. So you can have some sort of statement like so, but of course, most of the time, really, it would be bound to some sort of piece of data. So let's say here, hidden. So if hidden is equal to false, let me go ahead and say just hidden. So basically hidden is talking about this piece of data right here. So if hidden is equal to false, then of course it's gone. And then of course, if we set that to true, then in that case, we do render our text. All right, so what else can we do with V if? Well, V if has a counterpart, which is V else. So let's say V if hidden, then maybe let's say another H1, and this time let's say another, and then let's use the V else. So basically it will try to render this, but if it cannot, then it will render this one. All right, so that's a way for us to toggle some text. So obviously we see text, and then if we go back here and let's change this back to false, and now we get another. So we are conditionally rendering one thing over another. Another nice thing with V if and V else is of course we can render this inside even a for statement. So let's go back to our previous example and maybe have an li and it's V for item in items. So this time we'll actually have an object. So let's say item dot text. And then perhaps what we'll do in here is say the following. Let's say items. We'll have an array of objects, and the first one is going to be text. We'll just set that equal to item one. Let's maybe have a checked property, and let's say that that one is equal to true. All right, let's create item two. Let's check that to true, and then finally, let's have item three, and let's set that equal to false. All right. So now we have a V4 statement, and then we have this text. So then what we could do is something like so. Then let's say, let's actually add another div and use V if, so V if my item dot checked. So if my item is checked, in that case, maybe let's just say checked and that's it. All right, so let's check this out in the browser. Hit refresh and sure enough, we have item one is checked, item two, it is checked and item three is not checked. So this would be a nice way for us to display something like an icon or something like that. So that's it, V if, V else, very useful V directive that we can use in Vue. And again, always binding it into one of our data items. Of course, if this data changed at any point, then of course Vue would re-render. So I do wanna show you that very quickly before we go again. So the simplest way that I can actually do this is maybe just add a button here that will simply toggle checked or not. So let's say at click again, we kind of did some of this in the previous episode. And let's go ahead and just simply set item checked to the opposite of whatever item checked is. Essentially, we are just toggling this back and forth. All right, let's go back to the browser, hit refresh. Whoops, looks like I forgot to put a text in there. Let's say toggle. Now we should be able to see it. There we go. So if I toggle that, that's gone. Toggle that, that's gone. So we can toggle it again, and now everything is checked. So how cool is that? Again, this data-driven approach that Vue has is just so simple to do things like this, right? And of course, this could be something like your menu. Like if you wanted a menu to be toggled, this is the way that you would do it. Hide and show, hide and show. It's a very common functionality with any modern application. So it is nice that we could do this so easily. So that's it for this episode. Go ahead and play with VIF and VLS in your project. And when you're ready, let's move on to the next episode.